It's the Batman uh, symbol here. Yeah. 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 Is that what's supposed oh, to be? Batman? Batman yeah. Well, I guess in the spirit of Halloween, the bat. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Okay, okay, not too bad. Tonight, I play a 2-5 session at none other than Grand Vila. This hand, I pick up Ace-King at the cutoff. Under the gun, plus one limps. I raise it to $25. Only the limper calls. It's heads up into a flop of Ace-8-8 eight, eight with two clubs. The villain checks. I start this session by being a little tricky. Although there is a flush draw on board, the Ace is part of it, which makes it slightly less likely for the villain to have the draw. Since Ace-X suited covers a big portion of the suited combos going in facing a raise. Only an 8 beats me, and there aren't a lot of 8x hands the villain should have in this spot as well. If I see bet, I normally would take it down here. I check back to underwrap my hand and hopefully get two streets of value if the villain happens to have a non-believing pocket pair or maybe a weaker ace. The turn is the four of hearts. The villain checks again. I now start betting for value. I bet $40. The villain calls. The river is the five of hearts. Even though it completes the backdoor flush, it's most likely a brick. The villain checks. I go for a bet of almost three quarter of the pot at $100. I'm hoping my hand is under repped enough to get a call from any hand that has showdown value and is tempted to bluff catch against me. Unfortunately, the villain folds, and I take this one down. This hand, I pick up pocket aces in the big blind. Everyone folds to the button, who opens to $15. The small blind calls. I 3-bet squeeze to $60. Only the button calls. It's heads up into a flop of deuce, deuce, deuce. Very good flop for aces, I'd say. I check. This villain bets out a tiny $25. A bit confusing. He is a very solid regular I play against all the time, and I think we're both aware that it's very unlikely for either of us to have a deuce here in a 3-bet pot. I wanted to think that I'm a non-believer and I'm playing against his button open. The story I want to tell is that I see his $25 bet as weak, so I take the opportunity to pounce on it, possibly with not a strong hand at all. I raise it to $75, and as we know, this is actually for value. The bet sizes are kind of weird here, I'll admit. If he has a pocket pair, I think I'll get paid off all streets here. Unfortunately, he knows better and folds. This hand, I pick up Ace-King again, this time at the middle position. I open to $15. Everyone folds except for the big blind. The flop comes 10-7-5 rainbow. The villain checks. I hit nothing, and this board is better for his range, so I check back. The turn is a queen. That brings in the spade flush draw. The villain checks again. I have two overs and a gut shot, which is pretty good. I also have the ace of spades, which I can use to rep the nut flush if a spade comes in on the river and I need to turn my hand into a bluff for some reason in the end. Overall, just a good spot for me to fire now, as I can actually be protecting my ace high as well. I bet $30. The villain folds and I take it down. This hand, I pick up queen jack of diamonds in the middle position. I open to $15. The cutoff calls and the big blind calls. It's a three-way into a flop of 10-8-5 with two diamonds. This is a pretty amazing flop for my hand. I have two overs, a gut shot, and a flush draw. The big blind checks to me. I decide to lead out strong here, which would not be typical for multi-way. If I get raised or check raise, I think my hand has enough equity to go over the top and put in some 3-bet sizes to threaten entire stacks. I bet $50. The cutoff folds and the big blind calls. The turn is an offsuit ace. 
The villain checks to me again. Here is where it gets a little bit interesting. This is definitely a great scare card for me to continue barreling. It actually increases my equity as well, giving me a double gutter. Unless the villain has exactly ace 10, this is not a good card for him. My hand blocks most of the draws out there, so I feel like the villain has a 10 or 8 that is just uh, super tough to continue, whatever I bet. Because I was the preflop aggressor, and even if I was just C betting the flop with air, it's possible for me to have hit the ace. I honestly think that um, my bet can be any sizing to take it down most of the time here. But I kind of want it to look like I'm going for value wanting a call. I bet $50. The villain thinks for a while and folds. This hand, I have ace-queen on the button. Only the hijack limps before the action gets to me. I raise it to $20. The blinds fold, the limper calls. The flop comes, king-queen-6 with two hearts. The villain checks. This villain has been playing loose and doing some pretty uh, unorthodox moves. The hands he has shown have been quite unpredictable as well. From chatting with him, I get the sense that he frequents bigger games and is kind of a gambler. Very nice person, but quite wild, at least in poker. I decide that my second pair with top kicker is good most of the time here, and I'm gonna start charging value for all draws, as I know he is the type that will call down with all kinds of front door and back door draws. I bet $30. The villain check raises me to $75. I don't think much of it for now. He has already shown that he is capable of check raising with just draws. I call. The turn is an offsuit 5. He continues to bet for $100. I'm still sticking to my read. As long as the most obvious front door draws don't come in, which is hearts, which I unblock, or an open ended straight draw with jack 10, I also unblock, I will most likely call him down. I call. The river is the king of diamonds. This is actually the perfect card for me, greatly decreasing the chances of him holding a king, just making it much more likely that he has what I initially put him on. He bets $200. My mind was already made up, so I don't take too much time to make the call and table my hand. He says, you're good, and I take it down. This hand, I pick up Queen Jack of Diamonds again, this time at the cutoff. Everyone folds to me and I open to $15. The button calls and the big blind calls. The flop comes Queen 10 7. I hit top pair, so I'm thinking I'm pretty good. The big blind checks. I C bet for $15. The button raises to $50. The big blind folds. This villain is pretty tight, so I'm pretty confident his raise is repping strength for value. I think for a while and can't really come up with a value hand that I can beat. The only hand I may have had beat pre-flop is Queen-10, which now outflopped me. There's no diamonds on board, so my hand can't really improve as well, and I'll likely be showing down with one pair and Jack Kicker if I decide to commit. Against this player, I don't think that's good enough. Even though I have top pair on the flop, I decide to let this one go. Might be too tight of a fold. Let me know what you guys think. This hand, I pick up pocket aces in the middle position. Under the gun plus one opens to $15. I raise it up to $60. The cutoff calls and the original raiser calls as well. The flop comes 337 rainbow. Amazing flop for aces in a 3-bet pot. Don't expect anyone to have a 3 here. Plus 1 checks to me. I c-bet for $50. The cutoff folds and plus 1 calls. The turn is a 6. The villain checks again. At this point, I think I'm still good. I don't ever think he's in here with 4-5, which makes a straight. But there is a chance I'm losing to pocket 7s. My aces match the suits of the two threes on board as well, so there are still two combos of ace three suited he could have. I decide to play it safe and check back for pot control. The river is a very clean deuce. The villain checks once again. Now I'm sure I have the best hand and think of a value bet sizing. I'm putting the villain on a pocket pair 
So that's pocket fours, fives, or eights through jacks. I want to make a bet I think that all those hands could easily call with. This is one of those times that the villain looks like he wants a cheap showdown, so I'll give him exactly that. I bet a tiny $50, hoping to get paid one more street. Unfortunately, the villain snap folds. I am not involved in the next couple hands, but thought I'd capture some of the crazy action to share with you guys. The loose wild guy I played against earlier opens for $75, which has been his standard open for the last few hands, and quite big for 2-5. Someone 3 bets, someone calls, and wild guy jams. The result is a 3-way all-in preflop. I wasn't able to film the cards, but the 3 better scoops a huge pot with aces, and everyone else mucked. The very next hand, the wild guy reloads and is all in preflop once again. There is one caller this time. Good. Jax. Go ahead. Good. Jax, see? That's not me. Marvin. Yeah. Ben? He barely loses with pocket nines versus pocket tens and our wild gambling friend decides to call it a day. This hand, I pick up pocket kings in the big blind. Middle position limps. Garrett in the hijack position also limps. Side note, Garrett is the mastermind behind the artistic chip sculptures I share with you guys from time to time. Anyways, the button, a player who can be pretty aggressive preflop, raises to $30. The small blind folds. I 3 bet to $120. The middle position folds. Garrett, who has his reputation of having a very tight preflop range, tanks. At this point, I am already confused what he could possibly be thinking about having limped. To my surprise, he cold calls. The button also thinks for a while and then decides to fold. The flop comes ace 10 7, all clubs. The ace is slightly worrisome, but the thing is, I double block ace king, and I can never put Garrett on aces, limping late position, and then cold calling a 3 bet. I'm still not too sure, but at the moment I'm putting him on queens, so I'm feeling pretty good with the king of clubs. Still, I check for a pot control. Garrett checks back. The turn is the five of clubs. I have the absolute nuts. I'm just thinking what I can do to get just one street of value from this guy because that's all I think I'll be getting here, if anything. I check, just hoping he will bet if he happens to have the queen of clubs. He checks back. The river is the deuce of clubs. Now I think my best move is to polarize and try to rep a bluff. There might be a slight chance he might think I'm trying to bet him off a chop. I go for a pot size bet of $275. Garrett thinks for a while and folds. I later discussed this hand with him and he told me he had two red kings. So we had the same hand and I guess I coolered him by hitting the flush. He said he limped to trap the button player, who did end up raising, but after I 3-bet, I guess he decided to change gears to play it safe. This ends my session and I start racking up. And whenever Garrett is in the game, I'm always looking out for cool chip art to share with you guys. This time it's the Batman symbol. Here are the results of this session. I bought in for $1,500 and cashed out for $2,255. That is a profit of $755.